So now that you know a little better the differences between the dark web and the deep web, it's time to discuss some myths behind the dark web and some of the most incorrect things you'll hear online. To start off, the dark web is often represented as too scary or dangerous to access. Also, that it is immense, that only criminals use it, that red rooms are everywhere, that you can stumble on scary sites, that the deep web and the dark web are the same things, and that you will get arrested for accessing it. So let's go through these one by one to see why they're not true. To start, the dark web is often represented as too scary or dangerous. The dark web in actuality is often used for political freedom. It's the only free form of internet left, and you can use it for almost anything you want. The security on it is a lot higher, and you have a very small chance of stumbling on something scary. And contrary to most people's thinking, you won't be randomly hacked or sought out by using the dark web. The next myth we'll tackle here is that it is immense. Obviously, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but the dark web is only a tiny fraction of the internet, representing about 0.03%. It is estimated to contain anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000 active working sites. However, this is just an estimation. Nobody really knows for sure because it's very difficult to index and learn about these sites. Uh, but for such a small sector like we talked about before, it does have a very large impact, which may make it seem immense. Uh, the next myth we'll talk about here a little bit is that only criminals use it. Um, it's actually used very often by political activists, and again, it can be used for anything, guys. That doesn't just mean it needs to be used for drugs. It can be used for a bake sale as well. Um, there's no difference there. Many of the sites on the dark web provide useful and legal information, goods, and services. It's also used to get around censorship and geo-discrimination. Now, the next myth that is pretty prevalent when talking about the dark web is that red rooms are everywhere. Uh, if you don't know what a red room is, it's basically the idea that you can watch a live murder. To start off, live streaming is not possible over Tor, and that's not necessarily true. Um, it may be possible, but it's uh, logistically very difficult to put together. Tor doesn't offer the same kind of speeds as uh, the regular internet will. And most of the stories you hear online are always faked for views. Unless they provide proof of one or can show you that it was real, most of the time they are just lying because they want to get views or attention. And the large majority of the scary videos are on the surface web. The regular internet has far more videos that are weird, disturbing, and scary um, compared to the dark web. And again, you will not stumble on these or randomly get invited. They're usually uh, closed access. They're small. Uh, someone who does run these sites, if they do exist out there, they're not going to invite somebody random uh, because that would put their operation at risk. And that leads us into our next one a little bit here, which is you can't stumble on scary sites. Most of the content on the dark web is separated very well. The sites that contain these horrible things are usually invite only or just simply a myth. And again, guys, the surface web contains plenty of the similar disturbing content out there. And in the end, if you don't want to see it, you won't. Don't search for it and you won't find it. That's the whole idea behind that. The next myth we'll discuss here is that the deep web and the dark web are the same thing. We talked about this in the last module, uh, but we'll go over it one more time just to be sure everyone understands it. Uh, it's important to remember the dark web is a small part of the deep web. It is considered part of the deep web, but it's only a very small portion. And the dark web is purposely hidden. The deep web not necessarily purposely hidden, but the dark web is. And you access the deep web every day. This is by accessing your email, your Facebook messages, your bank account information. This is all part of the deep web. If you can get a link to it and access directly to it without any sort of security, authentication, or anything like that, it's considered the surface web. Obviously, that would be bad if anyone could just get into your email. So they add authentication, which puts it in the category of the deep web. And finally, the last myth we'll be talking about today is that you will get arrested for accessing it. In most every country, it is completely legal to access and use the dark web. Uh, the only few countries that it is not are, you know, countries like North Korea or something like that. They don't even let them have internet there, so it doesn't really count. Uh, but every other country, you're fine. And in the end, you aren't breaking a law until you actually commit a crime. Just because you view the drug marketplaces doesn't mean you're breaking a law. It's only when you actually buy the drugs that you're breaking the law. If you do find yourself somewhere bad, you are far safer than if you were on the regular web. Uh, if you're using Google Chrome and you stumble upon a pretty iffy site, 
that information is usually logged to your Google account if you're signed in, or Google can see it as well, and they keep that. Uh, when you're on the dark web, that information isn't really kept anywhere, and if it is, even though someone can see that information, they don't know exactly who you are, which makes it a lot safer. So hopefully you have a far better understanding of what exactly the dark web is. It's really actually a place where people can use the internet freely and safely uh, without being without being tracked or followed by like government agencies, which is a worry for a lot of people nowadays since uh, we have a lot less internet security. In the next module, we'll give you an introduction to Tor, the browser and protocols you use to access the dark web. And then we'll start exploring some of the more core concepts you need for the dark web before we actually get hands-on in section two with the dark web.